today we have the mesmerized and incredible Pamela Balominos. He's a world famous uh, physical therapist and, uh, and, and chiropractor. Welcome to Paddle Smash Academy. And we are all things paddle. So I am, like my degree says chiropractor, but the school that I went to um, was really rehabilitation focused and did a lot of other things aside just from the adjustments. There's some chiro schools you can go to that are, they only focus on adjusting, which is like the cracking that you would traditionally get with a chiropractor, um, which is great. But my school was like, that's an awesome tool to have and you're obviously gonna learn it, but we're gonna show you so many other things like exercise rehabilitation, soft tissue work, cupping, all these other types of soft tissue therapy um, where some schools don't always do that. So I am, my degree is a chiropractic degree. Um, our school also made us take physical therapy boards. So definitely a little bit of both, but my degree says DC. What, what, what is the big difference in between physical therapists and chiropractor? And why do, do they hate each other? Because my wife is a, a physical <laughs> therapist and she goes, oh my God, the chiropractors are hor you know, horrible. Yeah. So what is the big difference? So that is actually changing a lot right now. Uh, my thought or most people's thought these days, if you're in the chiropractic or physical therapy world, it should be if you're going to a good chiro or you're going to a good physical therapist, it should be hard to tell the difference whether they're a chiropractor or whether they're a physical therapist. That's how you know you're going to someone who is, I guess, up to date on all the information about what's going on. I have patients that I see sometimes and I don't adjust them at all. It just depends on what they've got going on, right? Um, physical therapists and chiropractors traditionally don't like each other because A, you're competing essentially for clientele. Uh, historically, chiropractors have only adjusted people. Like they've only done the cracking like I spoke about. And then physical therapists only did exercise. They didn't do anything else. They just okay. did exercises with patients. Okay. And can you fix people only by just cracking them? Some people say yes. And like I said before, it is a <laughs> <laughs> very helpful tool. When we were in school, they told us about patients that you're going to have, and they call them like the chiropractic miracle patients, where you literally adjust them once. They've had this big pain, let's say, for years. And you adjust them one time, and for some reason, that one adjustment was just what they needed, and the pain magically goes away. I'm going to tell you right now, I've been practicing now for four years, and I haven't had a chiropractic miracle patient yet. Uh, okay. Where with one adjustment, it gets better. Well, I okay. wish that happened to me. I know. <laughs> one adjustment, that would be great. All right. So I got to talk to you about paddle. How yes. did you become uh, the physical therapist for, for paddleists? And was it the Miami Paddle Open? How did that start there? And how did you start, uh, you know, um, working at uh, Wynwood Paddle Club? Basically, I was working in Aventura with my current boss. Um, he started to play paddle. And Interesting. yes, became, um, ascend, like loved it. I mean, everyone Addic who's, Addic everyone Addic who starts Addic to play, addicted, yeah, addicted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, from what I understand, his, his friends also very addicted. Um, and my husband actually started treating one of the owners of Winwood Paddle. And I think basically what happened was like my, um, they were interested in having someone, some sort of physical therapy, chiropractic person in the club. And the owner was like, oh my gosh, like this is going great. You guys would be awesome and awesome fit. And then my boss and him connected and. Great. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So how, uh, so what do you see? And well, how did you get the, uh, the Miami paddle open? Like the, you're the physical therapist for them. Like, how did that happen? I think just was the we, experience? it was, well, it was nuts because I had just started working there. I had been there, I think a month. So it was a little bit nerve wracking going in there. And like, you're treating all these people that like people are, they're famous, right, you know? Right. Um, so basically, I think it was just, oh, we're working at the club. The club was like, oh, why doesn't your company be the ones treating? And since I was at the club, my boss was like, you should be the lead. You know you know the people working here. Um, but it was nuts. It was like treating most athletes, though. Yeah, yeah. It, the thing about athletes and the regular population is athletes, you are like digging into them and they don't even notice. They're like on their phone. Wow, they're texting. Yeah. Normal, Not regular me. world people are like, I'm oh my crying. God, that's too much. <laughs> I'm crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I hear you. So, so what famous person did you uh, work on at the Mind Paddle Open? Ooh, I never know if I'm allowed to say names or not. I just said. Yes, yes of course. Definitely. Okay. You know? um, 
uh, LeBron was one of them. LeBron, I don't yeah. Know yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lobo, LeBron, yeah. Yeah, LeBron, well, the title play, no LeBron James, correct? Not LeBron James. <laughs> not LeBron James. Uh, I don't think you get specific, but LeBron, I think that's you awesome. awesome. Yeah. What, what was his problem when, when he came to you? So at the paddle, uh, the world paddle tour, it was mainly people coming in like post game. Some people came on pre, pre game to like get warmed up and ready to go. Most people came in post game. It was really hot that weekend. I'm not sure if you guys remember. Yeah. yeah. It was. I think they ha- they were shocked by the heat and being like right on the water. So most people came in with like leg cramps, wow. leg tiredness, glute pain. Wow. Lower body was what I I was assuming shoulders, arms, yeah. elbows. I I, I want to say lower body was like 80% of what I treated. Sounds like me all the time yeah. every time I play. 80% <laughs> of what I treated there was definitely lower body. For sure. Wow. Interesting. Mm-hmm. And let me ask one thing, one of the major issues that we get uh me as a paddle coach as well, it's it's Tennis elbow or paddle elbow? Yes, yes. Let me know what will be, do you know what causes it, well, how to prevent it, and how to cure it? Well, what's the most injuries you see there? It's probably the, the, the tennis elbow, paddle, right? Paddle, tennis elbow, for sure, wow. is up there. Okay. So Which let's, is, let's, what, what is it, the, the, the medical term? Uh, lateral epicondylitis. Okay. Yeah. So we'll call tennis elbow. Tennis elbow. <laughs> tennis elbow. <laughs> There's also, believe it or not, I've gotten a few uh, golfer's elbow also oh. from paddle players. The meat, That just means like the, the middle. Most people, it hurts here, right? On the outside. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've gotten a few people come in with medial elbow pain too. Okay. Uh, which is golfer's elbow. Um, but you can you can get it too in, in, in paddle. Yes. You can get it in the inside or, or the outside. I would say most is the outside. Yeah. I've had a few rare cases that it it's from they told me they only play paddle and it's the medial elbow okay, okay. So, yeah so what's the treatment for that what, what what's the exercise when they come in to see you mm-hmm. uh what do you do to, to them to relieve them from that from that pain and yeah. what can they do at home well but, but define first before we go into that it's what what is happening in your body exactly yeah. so lateral epicondylitis or tennis slash paddle elbow is an, an overuse injury so it basically is an overuse of your extensor muscles in your forearm. So anytime you do this motion where you bring your wrist back, mm. you're using extension. So it's just an overuse injury. You're using those muscles over and over and over and over again. And when that happens, that muscle will get nice and tight. Most people won't notice tight, el- tight forearms. They're, when they start to notice it is when it gets so tight that it starts to pull on the tendon. When that oh, happens, okay. it will wow. cause inflammation. You get tendon pulling, you're going to get inflammation in that area. And that's when people are like, ooh, I think I have tennis elbow or golfer's elbow. It usually gets to a point where they're already not so far gone, but the, the tightness in the forearm is already so advanced that now it's turned into tennis elbow or wow. and, paddle and, elbow. And, and uh, let me ask you one very important thing. You know, always, because me, I'm in the other side when they come with the tennis elbow and all that, or let's call it paddle elbow. Mm-hmm. It's there are different cases where the one is so se- severe that they could not even pick them the, the coffee cup, and it, it really hurts. Mm-hmm. You know, and the other ones that are not there yet. So when so when they're at that level, what yeah. will be the proper treatment? When they're at, at the point where you're, like they can't hold a coffee cup, or they can't text, or they can't like twist things off jars, or shaking someone's hand hurts, right? When it's so bad like that. You can do traditional physical therapy, chiropractic treatment. It will take much longer, like much longer. Nowadays, what they have are PRP injections. What's PRP injections? Platelet-rich plasma injections. So essentially, I am not an expert in this, but what they do (laughs) is they draw your blood, they spin it, they get not the red blood cells, some other nutrients in your blood, and they inject it into the area that is injured. I've done that twice. I was going to say, <laughs> I know Caesar's it, done it's it. It's the most pain I've ever felt in my life when they put that in my body. Really? Brain. Yeah, it's unbearable. But you wow. know what? It, it advanced the healing. I, I mean, was, it's two oh. weeks now and I ripped uh, 50% of my, um, my what do you call it, my tendon down there. And, yeah. And now uh, I'm able to walk and maybe just move around. I thought it was going to be on crutches for like months. Oh, so. That's what I mean. So like when you have tennis elbow or paddle elbow that is that advanced, like to the point where it's it's hard to even like shake someone's hand and you can't hold anything. If you are wanting to get back to paddle as soon as possible, you're looking at it's better to do something regenerative medicine. So oh, platelet-rich yeah. plasma injection, stem cell injection. They have a bunch of other things, exosomes, all these things that they can put into your 
joint and there muscle. can you do that so you can do it at our company yep okay. so we have a doctor on staff dr puvendran he's awesome and he is a regenerative medicine specialist he works with essentially all extremity joints so shoulders wrists knees hips ankles um yes all the extremity <laughs> joints he does uh spinal injections for those types of wow. things are not as well researched and not um there's not as much evidence behind it quite yet. They need to do more studies, but lots of evidence behind elbow injections, knee injections, ankle injections. And that really works. I mean, have you seen improvements? Yeah. Quick? I've yes. had lots yes. of patients. <laughs> lots. If Caesar had not yeah. gone, he would have been probably on crutches, like you said, for months. Yes. Yeah. Months. So it makes a world of a difference. So now when it's not that far gone... Um, what is the what do you what do you do to, to relieve that that problem that they have in tennis elbow? So I had a few patients actually today that I treated. Um, I did dry needling. Is okay. what I personally have found that works the best. Dry and, needling. And what it's is a, that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a form of acupuncture. Okay. Um, it is different than Chinese medicine acupuncture. What you're doing is you're just dealing with the musculoskeletal system. Um, so essentially, if you came in with tennis elbow, I'm just putting needles into your forearm and other areas that would affect the elbow, right? When you go to a traditional Chinese medicine acupuncturist, they, they might put some in your elbow, but they might put some all over the body, depending on the meridians that affect the elbow. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, now you did that to me. I've done it to you. Time, yeah. I've done it to but, <laughs> but they put it all along your, your arm? Your forearm, yeah. Wow. And sometimes, depending on the patient and um, how much pain they can tolerate or if they've ever done dry needling before, mm -hmm. I sometimes attach electricity too. So it causes yeah. the muscle to stimulate. Oh yeah, that's when you get that that. The contract, yeah. relax, yeah. contract, relax. So explain explain to people how that that works. Yeah. And how that helps. So, the needle itself is super super helpful because what you're trying to do is a calm down the nervous system. When your muscles are really tight in one area, like hap what happens with paddle elbow, um, the nervous system there is irritated and super fired up. So the needles will help calm it down. When you pierce uh, a muscle with a needle. You're going to relax that muscle, but you're also going to relax the nerve that supplies that muscle, right? Gotcha. So uh, when you attach the electricity to it, it also helps because you are going to contract the muscle quickly and then relax it. The quick contraction is what helps the muscle relax really well. Hmm. It's also going to help push out inflammation. When you have an overuse injury like that, where it starts affecting the tendons in the elbow, you have generally a lot of inflammation in that area and you want to pump that inflammation out. Inflammation is good if it is moving. If it's just sitting and pooling there, it's not good. So that's why putting the needles in, having the contraction and the relax relaxation is super helpful. Okay, and so how can people at home uh, uh, you know, treat themselves if they have a tennis elbow? Is there anything that they can do? For sure. Uh, icing is always going to be helpful, especially if you've had a long day of playing. I know Caesar sometimes gets pulled into matches. Yes. yes. A lot of matches. <laughs> no, yeah. we, we, we shouldn't call it all day, but maybe two hours. <laughs> <laughs> all day of playing is more like two uh, hours. Okay. Better than <laughs> half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, icing at the end of a, a long day of playing is always going to be helpful. Um, stretching. Okay. This is a weird muscle to stretch because everyone thinks that this is the way you should stretch it. Okay. Now. Don't get me wrong, that'll be helpful, but we're trying to stretch the muscles on the top here. Right. So best thing to do is basically push the wrist down, slightly tilt away, Ooh, wow. and My then relax. God. Yes. So wow. I'm all about when you're doing a stretch, down, away, hold for three to five seconds, take the pressure off, and do it again. I can, I can really feel it. It's nuts, it's, right? So does that oh my stretch God. it? You know that. So that's stretching the muscles that you're using all day, playing paddle, playing tennis, little twist. typing so, on a computer. So, type. so if somebody has that issue, they can do that before they play, right? Before you play, after you play. Um, and once again, generally, especially before you play, holding the stretch for a short amount of times and doing many repetitions, you'll get a deeper stretch. And um, you'll get a deeper stretch and just, you know, but I think what's more important is uh, we talked about it before is the biomechanics, right? So if they're having tennis elbow, well, yes, most likely I mean, they're not I hitting the ball injuries, correctly. <laughs> yeah, injuries are prevented by having the right technique. It's like anything, you know well, what I mean? I, yeah, I was gonna say when you guys asked me that initially, like I am no paddle expert. I've taken, I did a lot of paddle clinics when yeah. I was working out in my paddle, but uh, it is all about technique. Yeah, it is all about technique. That's how you prevent. I mean, you know, 
the best prevention is is good yeah. technique, right? Yeah, so like right, coming right, to right. you guys and getting coaches who are yeah. watching how you play. Yeah. yeah. Now the one thing I know, I just I grew up playing sports, so I know how it is. When you are, let's say, in a tournament and you're tired and it's the last game. Sometimes in those moments when like you're competitive and you mm-hmm. want to win, those techniques that you've gone over with your coach, He's they're out the window. You yeah. know, you're like, I'm just trying to get this ball across the court. Yeah. I want it to land. I want yeah. it to. So yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. tough thing, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. like when you get in those tournament settings and you're just trying to win and you want to. Well, but I think that goes hand in hand with the, the <laughs> physical conditioning. One thousand percent. And being in shape and all that for go for you. you no, know, I mean, when, like you said, when the technique goes away, the rest, you know. Yes. You, you get you you get you you pay sooner or later. A hundred percent. Let me ask one thing. Another thing, it's uh, when you were talking about the World Plato Tour, the the professionals ca- coming with really lower body, mm-hmm. you know, pain and all that. What specifically were those pains, and how do you solve them? Mm-hmm. Because I I do we do get to play, and you feel that heaviness on the legs. They, they don't move. They don't react. You yeah. know, the tension on, on your so what 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 were the issues there? So big issue was cramping when I okay. was there. Huge issue was cramping. But that could be dehydration. So since they I it was one thousand percent a lot of it was dehydration. Yeah. Dehydration, not proper supplementation of electrolytes. When it's this hot and it was also humid when they played, right? It was like the hot humid yeah. combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. lot of them were saying to me, they're like, I'm not used to playing in this heat. They're like, we've played in the heat, but also remember, they were coming from February. Yeah. In Spain, right. it's not, right. I'm not, yeah. You know, so there's a right. drastic change there. It was a drastic change for them. And they had been, yeah. tra- from what they told me, they're like, we've been training inside. Yeah. In like air conditioned, air conditioned yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. places. That's, no, right. Like, in the middle of the winter, I mean, there you, they, they went, they, they came from like 20s and 30s to, to the 90s. Exactly. Yeah. Degrees, you know, yeah. exactly. So, so dehydration was huge. Um, and I just think that maybe a lot of them were like shocked. They're like, oh, it's February in Miami. Just like everyone is like, oh, it's February in Miami. It's going to be cool. Yeah. And don't get me wrong. We've had some cool days, but then there's also some (laughs) days where I'm like, is it summer? I don't know. And so, so you touched something very important, you know, electrolytes. Yes. So how important are, especially if we play here in Miami, because we just drink water and not so much electrolytes. And I think, why don't we? Talk a little bit about yeah, electrolytes. electrolytes are extremely important. When you're sweating, you're releasing like salt and other nutrients, right? Yeah. So Miami, a lot of people I don't think notice it because they once you get acclimatized, you don't use you're not used to how much you're sweating. But coming from Canada myself, when I first moved here, I was like, oh my god, I was like tired all day. Mm-hmm. I was lethargic. I was doing my normal exercise that I had done everywhere else with no problems. And it wasn't, it was because I wasn't replenishing with electrolytes. Yeah. It is so important to replace your salt. Salt also is a very touchy subject with people because I'm sure everyone knows don't put too much salt in your food. You got to be careful. My cardiologist told me not too much salt. And don't get me wrong, anyone who has heart problems, please consult your cardiologist before taking electrolytes with a, a large amount of sodium. Yeah. But for the normal person, you need to replenish with salt because you can drink all the water you want. If you're outside sweating, playing paddle, sweating all that water out with nothing to hold it in, you're going to dehydrate yourself. Your muscles are going to fail and you're going to start cramping, right? Yeah. I, I, the salt helps you retain yeah, water and yeah. keeps those muscles feeling light. Like you said, at the end of a tournament, your legs are starting to feel heavy. We need that salt to hold on to that water. So yeah. How do you get the salt there? Do you use supplements or you just use simple salt? Is this salt, certain amount of salt for each cup of water? Well, how, I, how would you? The electrolytes do have some type of salt, right? Yes. Yeah, so my, my personal favorite electrolytes is this brand called Element or LMNT. Okay. Um, it has sodium, magnesium, and potassium in it. Potassium, another great thing to help you with cramping. Um, magnesium, also great for muscle cramping. And then sodium is great for so many different things. All those things have a lot of benefits, but no, um, the big question is: Does it taste good? Okay, <laughs> honestly, I think <laughs> yes. That's the, that's the problem. I, I think I, yes. I'll tell you a story. You know, when I was uh, when I was growing up, you know, playing uh, competitive and, and professional tennis before I moved into paddle, uh, our coach used to eat make us eat during the change of, of size of the court. Yeah, potato chips. And bananas, yeah, for the salt and the potassium. And now that you're mentioning it, now it makes sense. You 100%, know what I mean? percent, like exactly. We were just drinking salt water because we didn't have electrolytes, we didn't have the Gatorades or anything exactly. like that. So it was potato chips and 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 bananas. But so the pota- potassium is also very important. Yes, super yeah. important. So that's why I love Element. 
Um, I there's no sponsorship here at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just love them. I'll, uh, I'll check it out. Maybe maybe we can get one. Right? They're great. <laughs> now be warned. It is when if you put it into a drink, it says between 16 ounces and. 32. 32. I, I never know the <laughs> ounces here. I'm, I'm a leader's person. Yeah. Uh, start with a little bit. They come in these small little packets. They're very salty. So okay. I would start with like a quarter of a pack. Try it out. See if it's good for you. I like saltiness. So yeah. sometimes I put the full pack when I'm really feeling it and I need some energy. Uh, but it tastes delicious. Okay. And the best thing about it is that there's no sugar. Good. There's no sugar in it. Good. There's just no useless sugar okay gatorade's awesome but it has a ton of sugar ton of sugar like way too much sugar yeah then then you need yeah um not enough salt yeah element is awesome so tell me about those you know the professional players when when your your legs are tired where what what will be the right thing to do right after so definitely stretching okay. now when, when i mean stretching i mean like i said before when we were talking about stretching the forearm Stretches that you're holding for a little bit and then you're releasing. You're holding for a little bit and then you're releasing. Right after a game like that, when you're like super tight, sometimes when you hold them at end range for a really long time, like at a full range of stretch, you can cause uh, cramping again. Wow. So you want to do light stretching, especially if you're in a tournament. Stretching is great, but you also have to be careful. Mm. Stretching too much, you can pull muscles too far, right? Yeah. So you have to be in that happy medium of like a little bit of a stretch, but nothing crazy. You shouldn't be... Stretching and being like, ooh, this hurts. You should have that nice feeling of like, oh, this feels nice. I need to like lengthen this muscle. Let, let me ask. So what do you recommend? I mean, um, some people recommend stretching before mm. or after or both. Ideally, ideally, I would recommend an active warm up beforehand. Now. So activation. Oh. That's activation. Where they yeah. That's, that's my, it. Yeah. my personal professional opinion is activation before yeah a little light stretching not going to hurt you before yeah. but ideally stretching afterwards sometimes my i have patients who are like i really want to stretch before and i tell them how about instead of stretching you do foam rolling oh, same okay. kind of idea Be, that's after the match before oh before uh, wrong fo- okay oh, i, I love foam rolling before it's not stretching but you are also lengthening the muscles you're bringing blood to the area you're getting loose for the game um and foam rolling you have to be active you you know, you're rolling up and down. So you're not Good. stationary for a super long time. Um, so when patients tell me, they're like, I really want to stretch before. I'm like, stretch, but maybe do foam rolling instead of traditional stretching and save the more traditional stretching for the end. Good. Uh, now, <clears throat> when those players were getting actual cramps. Yes. What was the solution there to resolve it very quickly? Yeah. Because they have to still play, right? A hundred percent. So honestly, I went outside and asked someone for a banana and a Gatorade because that's what they, uh, I can't remember if it was Gatorade. Whatever the electrolytes that that were the, the drink that they had, the yeah. drink that they had there that was sponsoring them, um, and then basically what we did was soft tissue work. So I don't want to say it's like massage; it, it's uh, active release therapy. So you kind of are pinning down the muscle, stretching a little bit, pinning down the muscle, stretching a little bit, trying to pump the built up lactic acid out. Um, but the banana and the electrolytes were key as well. So right. how how quick does that work? I mean, uh, Very they, have, they have to go and play. You know, is it like Five minutes, a few minutes, or uh, like, I would say like five, ten minutes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So that's key when if you're getting uh, cramps right in the tournament. Yeah. Definitely. Oh my god, super key. The best thing was though most uh, most of the players, even if they were playing after, they had a couple of hours in between their next ma- next gotcha. next match. It was rarely. I think I had one one uh, team that they like. We they came in. They're like, we have twenty minutes, and we have to get back out there. And I was like, okay. okay. And then at that point, you're like, all right, I'm rushing. So, so let's talk about another injury, uh, something that you see uh, more often uh, when it comes to paddle players. Okay. Uh, shoulder. Shoulder's huge. That's my problem. Okay. It's shoulder. Shoulder is huge. Yeah. <laughs> shoulder is huge for so many different sports. Even freaking weightlifting is huge. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. A big one is going to be impingement syndrome and exactly where you're pointing, like the front of your shoulder here. Yeah. A lot of people struggle from uh, impingement syndrome. And basically what that is, is crowding you're using something a lot so paddle using your shoulder a lot tennis using your shoulder a lot um overuse of the muscles right and then the the tendons in here tend to get a little crowded and that can cause pain okay right so the idea is you want to loosen up all the rotator cuff muscles and all of the shoulder accessory muscles that surround that region so that the tendons aren't crowding so much and they can have their own space to move around the other difficult part about the shoulder is in this entire region from here 
to down here, you have a lot of nerves coming from your neck, traveling into your arm. So impingement syndrome, when you have those tendons starting to get compressed, they're going to start compressing on nerves as well. That's why it can be so painful sometimes. And it's a lot of the time people point right here as the area that they feel the pain. But really what's going on is there's a muscle in the back of the shoulder that's irritated. There's a muscle that's in your armpit called your subscap that's irritated. You have one on the top here that's irritated. A lot of them attach up here. So that's why a lot of people will feel it here. But the actual source of pain is in the back of the shoulder. Interesting. And, yeah. that, and that's where you try to... Do relieve, the work. Do yes. the work. Yeah, but first you have to find out where it is, where it's coming of from. Of course. So you take them through a whole orthopedic exam. And listen, I'm just telling you about impingement syndrome. There's rotator cuff tears. There's labral tears. Oops. Um, there's so many shoulder injuries. It's yeah. nuts. So and, and what will be... The treatment is first of all, find out and then take care of it. Yeah. What will, we're going back, prevention, technique, same thing. Technique. Right? And I mean, having the proper technique for the sport that you're doing, especially yeah. paddle. Proper mechanics. technique, but also super important, right, is people who are playing a lot of paddle, you got to do some cross training, you know? Yeah. You got to do some, whether it's personal training with lifting weights safely, of course, because you can yeah. also injure yourself that way. But, you know, you're going to build up strength in those areas so that they don't fatigue as often, so that you don't have to use accessory muscles to hit the ball, and then you're going to prevent injuries that way as well. So technique, uh, strength training, and cross training just – any other way, you know, do yeah. we be doing cardio different ways or so? So what exercises can they do to, at home uh, to loosen up that shoulder? If oh, my problem. gosh. Something that most paddle players have really tight is their pec muscle. So I'm sure everyone has heard about this stretch where you're standing in a doorway. You're going to put your arm at 90 degrees. You're going to have the doorway block essentially your arm here and you step forward and it kind of stretches the front of your chest here. That is a big one for people with shoulder issues. Um, Oh my gosh, I mean, there's so many stretches and exercises. But that's the easiest one, right? That's probably the easiest one. That's the easiest one to just like describe on camera right now. Okay. Let me ask one thing. I think this will be crucial if we can go to your clinic and then show us some of those exercises. Yes, I would I love you guys to come. it will be very, very important for, yeah. for to show to our viewers and, and audience. 100%. Yeah. You know, just go through the different uh, drills and, you know, things 100%. that we can do to, pre to prevent that. So let me ask one thing. When it becomes, when does it become chronic? So... Textbooks will tell you that one to, I think it's five days. It might be three days. I'm going to say five. One to five days is an acute injury. If you got no pain after like uh, one to five, the the injury and the injury is essentially gone after that, uh, you're good. Chronic, real chronic injuries are when, in my professional opinion, they uh, surpass a month, six weeks of pain. I'm like, all right. Oh. And they've tried a few things. They're like, okay, you know, like I tried hot and cold. I tried stretching. I tried all these other things with no relief. And then I'm like, all right, we got a chronic issue. Um, and how do you get rid of the chronic issue? Treatment. So you got to uh, go through the same things. Yes. More long-term long treatment. It's not going to be as a quick a fix. But as great as treatment is and as necessary as it is, if you're not doing the homework that we prescribe you to do, at home, like to do on your own, it's going to take much longer to heal. Right. I always give I try to give most of my patients a lot of exercise. I do have some patients that are like, listen, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and I'm like, OK, um, but if you can. And I try most of the time to give exercises that are easy to do, easy to do. You don't need a ton of equipment. But if you're doing that at home, easier to get better faster. Another thing that is super uh, necessary for recovery, especially in chronic issues, sleep. Wow. If you are not getting good sleep. Your body does not have the time it needs to heal. Wow. So if you're not getting good sleep at night, you're, you can still get better. It's just going to take so much longer. Like uninterrupted sleep. Right? Uninterrupted like sleep. Seven, eight hours. hundred Exactly. Like I totally understand when people have new kids, that's essentially impossible. I know that. But if you are someone who has the opportunity to have un uninterrupted sleep and get the seven to eight hours, it is going to be a game changer. And same thing with people who are in tournaments. So say you're playing Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Those nights in between the days, you should be getting some seriously good. If you want to be playing good the next day and you want your body to recycle all that lactic acid buildup, sleep. That's sleep. Beautiful. It's yeah, like it's honestly, it's, so, one of, it's yeah. so important and no one ever talks about it, but it's so important. Yeah. Pamela, let me ask. Uh, um, it's one thing that now is, is becoming very trendy. Mm. Cold therapy, cryo cryotherapy. You knew I was going to get asked this. <laughs> so tell, tell us about it. It's a good, I mean, this cold bath or the cryo, 
Is it cryotherapy that you So there's it? cryotherapy and then there's cold plunging. I personally have never done cryotherapy. Same idea though. Um, it's great. Okay. It's, what, what, it, what, it reduces the infl inflammation? So especially for paddle and what we're probably using it for is reducing inflammation, right? When you go into anything cold, so a cold plunge or the cryotherapy chambers, what you're going to do is uh, your blood vessels are going to constrict, right? Your blood is going to rush to the center of your body to keep your organs warm, right? So that's going to help with all the joints, your shoulders, your elbows, nip, nut, knees, hips, all that stuff. Um, and then when you get out, your blood vessels are going to dilate again and new fresh blood is going to come to that area mm. to help heal all the tissue. So that's the theory of it, right? Yes. Wow. It's a theory or it works? No, it definitely it works. Does. I mean, there's a lot of research that says it works. Okay. A lot of ev evidence-based therapies that are research papers that say it works. Do work. you recommend it? Yes. And do you have to do your whole body or can you just do like your face? Because I've seen that, <laughs> you know. I mean, no, your uh, face, or, no. I mean, only if you want to get Or certain areas. Or yeah, whatever, so you know? I personally say going, I, I tell my patients, if you can, go up to your neck. Gotcha. Right? Go up to your neck. You can get all the joints. I mean, if you're going in there anyways. Yeah. Right, 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 why right. not get the benefit for all the areas, yeah. you know? Right. I do say, though, best to do it after playing. Right after. It could be right after. It could be a few hours okay. after. The reason I say after is because, you know, you're going to get cold after. And you want to go into a game warmed up. Okay. Gotcha. Being warm. Like, that's just yeah. when you asked me about stretching. Yeah. And I said I prefer doing active warm-up versus stretching before starting. You want to go into a game warm, ready to go. Um, so, personal, professional opinion, cold plunge after you play. Wow. Cool. Yeah. Have you ever done that? No, but I've, I've been I've been Me I don't know wondering to do it. I mean, a lot of my <laughs> friends they have done it and they said it's fantastic. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they did a cry on the the cold plunge, cold plunge. So you can stay longer. The cry is, I think, it's like a minute or two. Yeah. That it's like drops to like 120 below. Wow. And it's like, but yes. you feel rejuvenated. When, oh my gosh. When you, when you leave that thing after two minutes. So I work. Uh, um, I work at a currently the clinic I work out of. I work for USA Sports Medicine, right? Um, and they have clinics all over South Florida. Uh, and the spot that I'm in is in the anatomy gyms. I'm not sure if you guys have seen them. No. They have gyms in, I think, South Beach, Midtown. I'm in the one in Coconut Grove. And they just opened one in Doral. Wow. Okay, let's let's talk about a little bit. So uh, explain, let's talk about a little bit about your company and yes. where you're located. And, yep. and oh, okay, yeah. Um, so <laughs> uh, I've totally forgotten about that. I work for USA Sports Medicine. Uh, it's an awesome company. We have chiropractor, chiropractors, physical therapists, uh, regenerative medicine doc. Uh, we have a concierge doc, Dr. Singh. Yep. Um, we have a podiatrist. We have, um, uh, there's also another separate sister company called Apprise Medical and, and Apprise Aesthetics um, that deals more with, um, I don't want to say beauty, but that's, uh, yeah, the beauty aspect of yeah, it, okay. right? Um, but the company I work for is USA Sports Medicine. Where are you uh, located? I'm in Coconut Grove, me personally, okay. but we have clinics all over South Florida. So we have two flagship offices, one in South Beach, where my husband works, and one in uh, Aventura. Okay. And that is like a very traditional looking like clinic. They have like a rehab floor. You have separate rooms to go in. Um, where I work is more of a satellite clinic. Or I have like my small room. I've got a couple tables and I've got all the supplies I need in there. And it's just me, my assistant, and the patients. Beautiful. Yeah. And you said it's within the anatomy gym? I'm inside the anatomy gym. Yeah. And you don't have to be a member to come and get treatment there. Okay. But the reason why I brought it up in the first place is because they have a cold plunge. Oh, okay. In their facilities. Yes. So sometimes when I have a long day Is that work, cold plunge meaning ice with water? I, it's literally, a, it looks like a hot tub, but it's freezing. I okay. think right now it's sitting at 30... Eight Fahrenheit. So, what temperature do you, do you need to be at to uh, for it to work? So, really, anything below fifty is what I okay. what I've read. Below fifty is some people say colder the better, but this the research says if you're doing it like realistically under forty eight, let's say. Okay. Forty eight or hit under. Forty eight because I don't know if I can go any lower than that. <laughs> Honestly, at that point, it's so cold. I tell so, patients, I'm like. Uh, but do you say you have to be a member? No. So for the cold plunge, you do. Oh, you okay. But to see me, you don't have to be okay. a member. Gotcha. Yes. Good. Okay. Yes. And That's then you're going to leave us the contact. We're going to put it right below. So for people yes. to contact you and the, the website and all that. So 100%. let's talk about 
the back, right? Okay. The lower yes. back. And yes, my even bread the and upper butter. Back, right? Because <laughs> I see a lot of that. I'm sure you see a lot of paddle players come in for that. And what do you see and uh, how do you resolve that? Or So biggest thing I've seen with paddle players is uh, depending on what side your forearm is, because generally you hit forearm most, or that's at least you most people yeah. you try to, right? Strongest that way. Mm-hmm. Most people. Um, is the side that they hit forearm with is the side that they have low back pain, right? Mm -hmm. Because imagine that's a ton of rotation. You know, when you're hitting, you're always rotating from the trunk, a little bit at least. Um, And what people don't know is that rotation with a little bit of flexion, which is bending forward, is when your spine is at its most vulnerable. So you're right. Paddle players have a lot of back pain. And that's because of the rotation and the flexion. And imagine adding torque to that, right? Right. When you're hitting the ball. So ways to relieve that. Stretching. Soft tissue work. Exercises to make the back stronger. Um, When they come in and see me, I do a lot of decompression therapy, which essentially is just trying to separate the vertebrae um, to give them some space, stretch out the muscles along the spine. Um, And And how do you do that? I have a very fun table in there. Okay. <laughs> yes. A torture table. I've seen it. A torture table, but it feels amazing after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it's a little well, bit medieval, but it feels awesome. But <laughs> well, what can they do at home? Like so if somebody has a back back pain, what, what what can they do? Rehab exercises and stretches. Okay. Sciatic nerve. Yes. Which we all get quite a lot. Yes, I have a lot of patients with that. Causes and prevention and cures. And why do you get it? Okay. And is it, you know, a muscle or is it the actual, it could be a herniated disc? What what are all the, because that, that all feels almost the same. So you're answering my question for me. <laughs> um, it, so sciatica, right? Sciatic nerve, sciatica. Yeah. That's when you got radiation of pain down the leg. Yeah. Kind of feel in the back and then boom, it's starting to shoot down your leg. True sciatica is when you have a nerve in your uh, nerve in your back compressed, and then it goes down into your glutes and goes down into your leg. Right? Sciatica can come about from a few different ways. Um, most, like I said, most time a nerve gets compressed in your back if you're between the ages of thirty and fifty. Thirty and let's be let's say thirty and sixty. Uh, the most common cause of true sciatica, and I'll say what I mean by true sciatica after, is uh, a disc herniation. So that disc pops out, it compresses on the nerve, and it's starting to send pain down the leg, right? And pops out is not the right term, but you know what I mean. It, herni- it comes it's like out. Herniated. It slips out, yeah, yeah. starts pressing on some nerves, causes irritation. The reason why I keep saying true sciatica is because people can get sciatica like symptoms that is not actually a nerve or a disc herniation. Uh, you can get something called piriformis syndrome. What that is, is there's a muscle in your glute called your piriformis. It's an external rotator of your hip. When it tightens, it sits on top of the sciatic nerve. So when it gets tight and compressed, it can start to push on that sciatic nerve. And then that sciatic nerve will send the pain down the leg. So how do you, at home, how would you get rid of that? Well, it depends on if it's true sciatica or if, if it's, it's piriformis it's, syndrome. Mu- yeah, that one, the muscle one. The muscle one. So foam rolling on the glute foam rolling 1000% on the, glu- on the glute on the glute okay. foam rolling on the glute no actually in the back where the pain is coming from the, of the so right on the glute if you have true sciatica it's much more complicated but how can you tell which one is which you have to go in and get it get it oh yeah okay. even me sometimes you have to like the you take someone through a, a serious uh neurological and physical exam to tell them like okay you have a herniated disc or You've got piriformis syndrome. Another thing that can cause sciatic-like symptoms is joint dysfunction. So just meaning uh, improper motion in your joint, in your sacroiliac joint, which is also in your low back right above your glute. Okay. Well, if it's a muscle and it's tined up, eventually after a few days, when it loosens up, you should technically no longer feel that pain, right? And that's kind of how you know maybe it's not a herniated disc, right? Yes, so Exactly. Because a hernia disc is going to be painful, I think, all the time. <laughs> it never goes time. away, right? All the time, yeah. So the foam roller would be option number one. Foam roller would be option number one. You're like, ooh, I'm having pain down the legs. It's kind of starting in my low back, but I feel it in my glute. Let me roll out my glutes. So what Let are you actually doing? On? Trying to roll it, rolling off some of your muscles with, with a foam roller, right? Foam roller, like yep. Loosening it up. and Exactly. Loosening it up. Gotcha. You're trying to get any knots out of there. You're trying to take some pressure off that sciatic nerve um, that could be causing the sciatic-like symptoms. Cold and all that, that doesn't do anything. 
it could be helpful. It could be helpful because maybe that muscle is tight. Maybe it's a little bit overworked. We have a little inflammation there. Always maybe, try uh, it. In the hot Cold, tub, jacuzzi hot. or something. Sometimes I tell patients, I'm like, if it's really bad, try ibuprofen. But Pamela, all the things that you're telling me is more moving towards the physical therapist. We haven't cracked anyone yet. So, so yes. How do, you, how do you can you crack someone and fix the, the sciatica? Or, oh my gosh! Or, so if you have, or the elbow, or the shoulder. So if you have true sciatica, definitely maybe not. Maybe if you come in and it's like a hot, we call it a hot disc, meaning like you have sharp shooting pain all the way down to the bottom of your foot. Walking hurts, sitting hurts, yeah. everything hurts, right? Yeah, and it's agony, like completely yeah. unbearable. I won't be adjusting you on day one, that's for sure. You won't be able to get into the position that I need you to. But once we get that pain to come down so what, a little bit. So what do you bit, do with the adjusting? We, what you're trying to do is restore proper joint motion. Okay. When your joints are stuck and they aren't moving properly, they're going to cause so much more pressure to the system, right? The reason why adjusting is a great tool is because it provides a quick stretch to the muscle. You help restore proper joint motion that you used to have there. And for whatever reason, whether your muscles are tight whether you've got inflammation in the area, whatever caused those joints to stop moving, um, you are going to help release that tension. Adjustments also help. Uh, they give you kind of like an analgesic effect after you get the adjustment done. Um, so it can be super helpful in that regard. But when you have true sciatica and it's going all the way down, ideally, I want the pain levels to come down a little bit. Once you come in, you're like, I still have it, but like it's more bearable now. Then I'm going to start adjusting you. Okay. So, okay, perfect. Got I'm it. still going to do soft tissue work. Yeah, yeah. So anytime a patient comes in, I do soft tissue work. And if they are a candidate for adjustments, because some people are should not be adjusted, depending on if they have osteopenia, osteoporosis, depending on if they have other health conditions. Um, Can you hurt someone by adjusting them? A hundred percent. But oh. just like you can hurt someone going to a massage. Doing okay. soft tissue work. So that's why you, you do get exercises. Yeah. Yeah. Doing exercises wrong. You can yeah. get hurt so many different ways. So now is there a point where you, you, you say to your client, well, you know, I think, I think it's, you may have to have surgery, you know, like on a herniated disc or something where, uh, physical therapy is not, or chiropractic is not going to help. Is there a certain point where you feel like, okay, this is needs uh, surgery or, or something like that? A thousand percent. There's always a time. There's a time and a place for surgery. But what I tell all of my patients is surgery is irreversible. You can't, once it's done, it's done. I tell them you need to try absolutely everything. I don't care if it's me. I don't care if it's you're going to someone who does energy healing, whatever it is. Right. If something helps get rid of your pain and you don't have to go through surgery, that. Oh, yeah. If you can avoid you're surgery, yeah, you're amazing. Exactly. Exactly. But there is always a time and a place for it. Yeah. There's times where I'm like, listen, this, this point is of no return. point of no return. But I will let you know, about sixty to eighty percent of disc herniations resorb naturally. Really? Wow! Yes. I didn't know that. However, it takes a long people, time. <laughs> it takes a long time, and people don't want to wait. Yeah. If people go in for consistent therapy, they'll say three to six months, which is awesome. The thing people don't realize about surgery is once you get the surgery, you That's still have it. to go to rehab. Yeah, yeah. You're still going to be going to rehab for three to six months yeah. after. And, so, the, and the, it's a, that, that's a very risky operation too. Super risky. So they, they can't guarantee you 100%. No guarantee. I have a few patients that I see can, on a consistent basis now, and it's because they went in for surgery. And the pain that they went in for is gone, but because of the surgery they now have pain in other regions and there's no other way to fix it than going in for more surgery wow do you know what i mean yeah and they all say they're like listen if i can do this once a week and it keeps me feeling good and i can still do the stuff that i want to do i'd rather do this than go back into surgery and then who knows maybe it works maybe it causes other issues x y and z you know wow. fantastic I, oh, I i just love that i mean it's extremely helpful so listeners <laughs> you know, everyone that is watching, she is the one. If something hurts, you got to go and see Pamela. Oh, she yes, will come fix on all your problems <laughs> so and the, all your pains. So another area I think people get uh, have problems with is their shoulders and their ankles, right? So Ankles. Uh, ankles I was going to so. say, when I was at the World, World Paddle Tour, that's something I saw a lot of. Wow. Well, really? Yes. <clears throat> you mean sprained ankles? Yep. So 
something that I was not aware of when I signed up for the tour, uh, not signed up, but when they were like, oh, you're going to do it. I was like, cool. Um, I didn't know the rules that like, if someone has an injury on the court, there's like only a certain amount of time Yes. that you can stop mm -hmm. and do like the taping and stuff. Okay. So in school, the school at least I went to, you learn how to do sprained ankle taping, all different types of taping you learn how to do. But at we're not- base. Pardon? Uh, at my own pace. Yeah, but you're not timed. <laughs> at but my you're own not pace. Timed. Yeah, you're not timed. Yeah. So that was a shock. <laughs> I remember being out there sweating buckets. <laughs> and I was like going as fast as I could. I had like uh, some other uh, colleagues and uh, physios and people out there with me. And like Telling the you, two 30 of us. seconds left. 45 oh seconds God, left. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Rough. I didn't realize that. But yeah, there was a lot of sprained ankles that day. Once again, wow. I don't know if it was the heat that caused that. Another thing that I was not expecting, lots of sprained ankles. Yeah. I can't even tell you how many ankles mm. I taped. A lot. Well, wow. in, in paddle and tennis, you have a lot of lateral movement I was and a say. lot of quick reactions on lateral yeah. movements, and that's the mm -hmm. ankles. One of the things, actually, as a matter of fact, uh, when I what I see with my students, it's they come and play. One of the issues they have is they come and play paddle mm. with running shoes. Yes. And that's the worst you can do if you want to. Yes, <laughs> I did that when I started. You can really hurt yourself, yeah. you know, uh, playing with with running shoes. I believe it. I yeah. believe it. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw it the other day. Yeah, this lady fall. She has running shoes. Fall oh, really? On the ground. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> oh man. I know. You know, and you could twist your ankles because usually the those shoes are a little higher, right? Well, yeah. imagine and running no support shoes. Support left to right. They they have all those like curves and mm -hmm. support in certain areas depending on what to, type of running you're forward. doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So oh. that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. But Achilles also huge Achilles. area yeah. that uh, for paddle players. I have a patient who Achilles. It's is it a tendon or is it a muscle? Tendon. Okay. But your calf muscle, your calf muscles. So you have a soleus and a gastrocnemius, two muscles of the back of the calf, right? Um, those. Can you repeat those names? I like. It sounds very uh, exotic. Yes, they do sound exotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the traditional calf muscle that most people think makes up your calf is your gastrocnemius. Okay. And then there's actually a muscle behind it that also contributes to your calf. It's called uh -huh. your soleus. Okay. Yes. And so those are connected to the Achilles tendon. They essentially kind of turn into the Achilles tendon. Mm -hmm. So it will, it's like muscle, muscle, muscle. And then there's like a transition segment where it starts to turn into a more tendinous portion. And then it turns into the Achilles so tendon. So what do you see happening with uh, paddle players? Well, I had a patient come in recently and he was telling me, he was like, I was playing. And this is someone who has played forever he used to be a professional i remember i want to say paddle name? i'm not going to say his name i just don't know if i should yes but Why yes <laughs> I, i'm sure he wouldn't care but he was telling me he like ran up to the glass and he like put so this is the glass he like mm -hmm. put his foot up to stop him he like put his foot up against the glass and he like felt a pull on oh, the achilles man, tendon wow. right he came in it wasn't a, it wasn't a tear okay. like he may Definitely wasn't a tear because if that happens, a tear that, that is broken completely. So you no. can have partial tear. Okay. You can have a partial tear, right? Mm -hmm. If that happens, and for someone like him who I know is like, I want to get back ASAP, mm -hmm. I'm sending him to Dr. Vendron and getting a PRP stem cell, whatever he decides is best for yep. that patient. Um, but he just did a light lucky. He was super lucky. Mm -hmm. He did a light pull to his his calf muscle. But if you have pain in one of those calf muscles, it can start to go down and you start to feel in your Achilles tendon, right? Because the two are super intimately connected. Um, but Achilles tendon is a rough. If you oh. have a full Achilles tendon tear, that's surgery. surgery. That, 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 I mean, wow. There's no way around. Wow. So, and that's when they have to open and they have, and, and what happens if, you, if, if it breaks completely? You can walk or you can. You can walk, but like um, you have no spring, zero spring in your foot. Okay. So. You know, when you walk, it kind of like propels you forward. Like even when you're barefoot, your foot kind of has that like when you yes. heel toe, heel yeah. toe, yeah, yeah. it is like hard to do that. So that's uh, where the... It kind of looks like your head, your head, you know, your foot like hangs like this yeah. kind of. Your foot would, is going to be like this. Wow. Yeah. Is that where the mythological story comes from, from Achilles was defeated? Your when, Achilles heel. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When he he got shot in the Achilles by an arrow and then he couldn't keep fighting. Is that, is that where it comes from? I... I think so. Okay. I, don't call <laughs> me on that. The, the, I don't the know Greek for mythology, sure. I, I think that's where it's come from, the Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. uh, that's super interesting. And what what is, if it's tear, what is the treatment for it? So, okay. Now, I said I mean, you have to be very careful because you can break it, right? 
So yeah. you don't want to go that. So so breaking it, what, what is the recovery like time? The full tear? Yeah. So once again, I have to actually check with Dr. Puvendran if he can't. I, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure if there's a full tear, he, you go to surgery, but... I think it depends because I think he has done some stem cell injections in some people wow. that have close to a full tear and they've gone. Wow. Yeah. That's um, awesome. But that part I have to double check on actually. Um, but if you have a full tear and let's say you go the surgery route, um, you they're going to essentially sew it back to get back together. Um, and then from there it is painful. Long surgery. It is yeah. sorry, long yeah. rehab. Like yeah. you are, it is a lot of rehabilitation. So you mentioned stem cell. Can you, Talk to our viewers a little bit about that. Yeah. Stem cell is, uh, everyone has stem cells in their body, right? It's what, how all of our current cells came to be what they are. We started as a stem cell and then it proliferates and turns into a skin cell or uh, a heart cell, a blood cell, you know? We, as we get older, you have less and less stem cells available. So, when a patient is going to get stem cell therapy, a big thing to ask whoever is providing it, you should go see Dr. Puvendran. He's awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoever's providing it, you got to double check that you're, they are going to be using your own stem cells. Your stem cells are going to help you heal fastest than anyone else's stem cells. Sorry. Some places will give you umbilical cells or something called Wharton's jelly which is essentially just stem cells from someone else, whether it's another human or another mammal, or if I'm not mistaken, they're now starting trying to make them uh, chemically or what's the right word? Synthetic. 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 Sorry, yeah. that was the word I'm looking for. That's why now some of the people, they ask you when you have a baby to uh, safeguard the umbilical cord because of the stem cells to pre- pre- to pre- preserve I, I i think that's what it is to preserve the umbilical cord from what i understand that's part of it yes okay once again don't quote me on that not an expert okay. in that particular realm um but that's why you want to make sure when you go to your doctor that you are using your own stem cells so how do you, so how do you do that how do you get your own stem cells all right so places you have stem cells your hip bones your ilium these like where you can feel the top of your hips on your side here yeah, yeah. Basically, what they do is they drill a hole into the hip and then suck it out like that. Wow. Wow. Not, not the most comfortable procedure, from what I understand. I haven't had it done. And then they inject it again or they have to go through a specific process? So, they'll take it out. They essentially process the stem cells and then they're going to inject it into, let's say, your Achilles tendon we were just talking about. They're going to inject it right into the Achilles tendon wherever you need it done. Wow. So, how about the farmed... Uh, um Stem cells. And is that inferior or does that work the same way? I mean, from what I have seen, I have heard and the research papers say the it is not as good. Okay, It is always better to use your own because your body knows what cells to change into. That's a good cool thing about stem cells. It's like, oh, I'm going to put you in my Achilles tendon and I want you to turn into Achilles tendon cells. Wow. If it's your own stem cells. It already you're knows already your body. Programmed to to oh become gosh, that. Yeah. So when it's someone else's, don't get me wrong. I've had some people have some. They told me they had some success with uh, the umbilical stem cells that is someone else's or the Warren's jelly, but not to the same extent. Okay. So because it's a, it's a new substance coming into your body, and your body's like, mm, just like when someone gets a transplant, and they're like, ooh, let's see if this is gonna the body will accept or reject it, right? So same thing with like, the stem cells. Mm-hmm. You want. You don't know if someone else's stem cells are going to... It's not guaranteed it, it may or may not stick, right? Exactly. So that's gotcha. why you always best, if you're going to be looking into stem cell therapy, that you are using your own So what's the difference between stem cell, some cell therapy and PRP when you're using it at, at let's just say, uh, an injury? Mm-hmm. So that is definitely a better question for Dr. Puvendran. But from what <laughs> I understand, which who could be, he could be a really cool person yeah, to have on the podcast maybe, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Depend. I do know that he likes to do PRP on lateral epicondylitis, paddle slash tennis elbow. Okay. Lots of good results there. I don't want to. I don't want to answer that question because I'm. I feel like I'm going to say it wrong. But uh, the difference is essentially you're just getting blood. PRP is platelet rich plasma, right? So mm-hmm. you're just getting your platelets and your plasma from your blood. 
which once again came from stem, stem cells in the beginning. That's incredible. That's I mean, that that will be extremely helpful for me to recommend to my students when they come from yeah. with tennis elbow injury. And oh, it, man. And it, and it works yeah. because I've had that done already yeah. for yeah. my foot. And it's, uh, I mean, it is painful, you know, when yeah, you check I mean, it in. Yeah, but, but it's more painful it, than having it for six, it, seven months at tennis elbow. And you get irritated playing, like, yeah. you, you can't play, right? It yeah. makes the, rec the recovery so much faster. Yeah. So if you want to get out there and play again, I mean, that's maybe I mean, when you said you played it yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, it was easy. I know. You still, know? still. I'm, but the thing that I'm, like, uh, you know, really excited about is that, like, I can walk and I can do normal me. Because when that happened, I thought I was... Wasn't gonna walk for a month at least, at least, and I'll be two, three months out. I feel I think I got, a, I think a couple of weeks, and then I think I could play like, not a hundred percent, but almost there. Yeah, you know? and like, no matter what injury you had, even if you didn't go the PRP route, no matter what injury you have, let's say, you are out for three months, like you thought without the PRP, the first couple of games back, you're still not gonna be a hundred percent. You know right, what I mean? Right. So. That's normal. But that's right. the fact that you're doing this, what, a couple weeks later is incredible. So when would you consider doing PRP when it comes to a paddle uh, injury? So I had another person come in a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to say their name. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they came in and their paddle elbow was so bad, like oh. so bad. So they came from, they from paddle. Yeah, they were from paddle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was like, listen. I can do I can do therapy. It will get better. It's gonna take a long time. I was like, go see Dr. Puvendran, get a consult, talk to him about it. But I'm telling you, if you want to get back to paddle like as soon as possible, this is your quickest route. Yeah. I'm still happy to do treatment if like that's what she wanted to do. And she wanted to have treatment that day. I was like, hundred percent. Let's we'll do it. I was like, but you need to go see Dr. Puvendran. Did she do it? Uh she did. And what was the result? So you know, you know, you know I happen. actually transferred her to South Beach because I'm not at Wynwood much anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, but from what I understand, she's doing good. What equipment are, are available for for players uh, to use at home to help with, uh, you know, injuries and so forth? I think you talked about the, the roller. The foam roller. Foam, foam roller is awesome. Okay. Uh, lacrosse balls are great. Okay. Now, How one do you thing. How you use lacrosse balls or, or what, what is Because they're heavy and round. Yes. Yeah, they're so. heavy and round. So... If you have a lacrosse ball, please be careful. I've had patients come in with bruises from using it too aggressively. And my favorite thing is actually using a, a paddle or a tennis ball. And same idea. So essentially what you do with a foam roller, same thing, but you put the ball there. So it's a little more intense than the foam roller. Gotcha. Foam roller is more general. This is better at pinpointing. Like, gotcha. oh, you got a pinpoint area that you want to work on? I would use the ball and versus so foam roller. when you find it, you'll know, right? Because it hits us. And you kind of melt you into that spot a little gotcha. bit. That's why I like the tennis ball because it's safe to melt into that and sit there for a minute and like relax into the. It's a great tip. I use that all the time once you show me. It's right. amazing, right? So it is amazing. It's amazing. The it's LB, amazing. The, all the different uses a tennis ball has. Right? Oh my gosh. It's incredible. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. My dog loves them. You know? I know. <laughs> If you're old, you can use it on the walker. Yeah, that's right. You like know you what do. I mean? Like, you like I do. <laughs> you can use it on the walker. On the cane. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> they do use it on the cane. My grandma had that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's funny, right? Uh, okay, so anything else? Or? Yeah, for sure. Um, Theragun or Hypervolt, those like massage yes, guns. Yes, I've seen that. How so, good is that? I was going to ask you about that. The famous Theragun those. and all the mimics there are outside there. I, 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 was, I was always so close to bite one. As in, mm -mm, are they really worth it? I don't think you have to get the expensive ones. I at home we have a hypervolt, but when hypervolts and theraguns came out, if you were like um, a therapist of any sort, they gave you like a discount code when they first came out to help popularize them. Yeah. So I got mine like for a very affordable amount. Um, they are great. You don't have to get the most expensive one. They're all going to do the same thing. What do they do specifically? I just like them to if you got tight muscles. Feeling tight after a match? They're great. Really? Something that so I... So just do the... That's it. Like if you got a knot somewhere. Exactly. Yo, the much. elbow or, or... Now, one thing about these guns that I don't like. For example, if someone has a disc herniation and they're like, oh, my back is sore. Oh, no. I'm going to put the gun on my back. Oh, no. yeah. That is a no. Okay. Tight muscles, they're great. If you have an actual injury, like let's say... Sciatica. Sciatica. Sciatica would be good to do in your glutes. It would okay. be good to do down your leg. But right in the back, 
forget. No. Especially if it's a herniated disc Especially or Especially if it's a herniated disc. You don't need to be hypervolting that area. Vibrate your, your low back, your spine in general is super sensitive to vibration. So imagine. Shoulder pain? Shoulder pain is good. Once again, let's say you're having sharp pain here. Don't go hitting the Theragun and the sharp pain here. You want to do all the muscles that surround the shoulder. If you're, I always explain it as, imagine you had a cut on your arm, right? You're not going to go, and, and they say like Theragun would help that, right? You're not going to go hit the cut right here. You're, the wound will have no, no chance to close, right? Yeah. So let's say you pulled a muscle. It's the exact same as like cutting your skin. You have a wound there. If you're just hitting the wound over and over and over again, you're having no chance for that wound to heal. Yeah. Now, all the muscles that surround that area that are now tightening up because you have to compensate, those areas are safe for sure to use the Theragun. But using it directly on the area, especially if you have a spot that's sharp shooting pain, do not Stay Theragun there. Okay. So people. So who, what would you do on the tennis elbow? Let's say my elbow is hurting. So mm-hmm. where, where should I do it? Forearm right here. So that's it. Not right on the elbow. Okay. Not right on the elbow, forearm, no problem. It's made for the muscle. You want made for the muscle. Focus on muscle. Yes. As long you don't as you need do to that, be putting it okay, on tendon. Right? Yeah. If you're on the muscle, you're golden. So from your expert point of view, so it's recommended to have one at, at home. Oh yeah, I love it. I use it at home. My husband uses it at home. Yeah. Okay. We, have, we, have one. we train a lot, so I use them on my calves all the time. Is there any difference between I mean, what is the difference? The brands? Yeah. Theragun is supposed to be the D1. Theragun and Hypervolt are like the ones that the professionals use. Okay. You know? So like in our office, we have Theraguns, we have Hypervolts. So it's more um, of a commercial use. You're using all the time. But I'm if you're just using it when you get injured or once in a while, you may not need that, right? You may not need that. And, and to be honest, I've used the ones that are not Hypervolt and, Thera- and uh, Theragun. And to me, they, they seem the same. The same. Maybe they don't right. have as many attachment heads. Maybe they don't. They probably are. You know what I mean? <laughs> I hundred percent. Like, I have no idea. But uh, and what is the attachment most used? Is it the little ball, or so? Because I, they come with different ones, and they sell you extra ones. And which one should I get? Yeah. So there's one that looks like almost like a baby tennis ball. If you've yeah. seen it, it's like kind of like foam. Yeah, yeah. Ball. That's a typical. That's very safe. Yeah. One to use. If you're wanting to get a little deeper, you know the one that looks like a bullet. Have you seen the little sharp? Yes. It looks kind of like a bullet. Yeah. That one's going to be a little more aggressive. Wow. Yeah. But and there are one that like, like two spikes. So that one, the reason they have the two spikes is you have someone do it for you. And imagine this is your spine. Oh, oh down the, both the muscles, down the, the muscle. Okay. There. Right, right. It feels amazing. So if you have yeah. someone who can do it for you, and you do the hypervolt, and you have on both sides the wow. muscles that line your spine, it's going to feel delicious. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Yeah. My favorite saying of all time for most people, when they're injured, most people think, I'm just going to sit and do nothing. That's not the case. Unless you have a broken bone. that Good. You need to rest that, of course. Put it in a cast. Um, but if you have an injury, my favorite saying of all time is motion is lotion. So, uh, I like good. it. Uh, yeah, that's a good one right there. <laughs> I know. That's I true. see it. All of my it's patients, true. I see it. Which means what? That you got to do the motion. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. So say you have say you have a lumbar disc herniation, a sciatica. If you sit all day, your sciatica is going to be much worse. You need to keep moving because movement brings blood to the area. You want constant re- refresh of new blood to help heal any injured tissues. Mm. Same thing. Tennis elbow. Maybe you can't play tennis or you can't play paddle. You should still be moving. You should still be using your arms just in a way that's not going to irritate it. Because it's going to help bring fresh blood to the area and help heal you faster. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. We had a great time. Me too. Thank you for helping us to do all this and all that. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications. And remember, it's free 99. It doesn't cost you anything to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in to Paddle Smash Academy. We hope you'll find our videos informative, helpful in improving your game and learning all things paddle. So until next time, keep improving your game and remember learn play and share